Hey everybody, I'm Aaron Steichen. I'm a solutions architect at DBT Labs. This video is for DBT Cloud and Databricks administrators covering how to set up your Databricks permissions and catalogs in order to use DBT Cloud successfully. In this video, I'm gonna be focusing on the steps that will need to be taken by your Databricks administrator at both the account and workspace level. So I'm already logged in to my Databricks workspace. This is the main place the Databricks users are gonna go but we need to get over to the admin portal. So in order to do that, you need to have account admin permissions. And then you can see how to get there by clicking on your name up here and then going to manage account. So that's gonna take me to a separate place that lets me edit things at the account level rather than the workspace level. So you can see here, I got a lot of different workspaces I can choose from. And first we wanna add a group. So we're gonna to go to this user management and then groups tab, and I will add a group called transformer. And having a group is gonna let me add members to that group. So let's go ahead and add myself. And then I can grant my permissions to catalog schemas and tables to this group rather than having to give it to individual users. So that saves me from having to apply grants every time a new user is added to my Databricks workspace. Next, I'm gonna go back to my Databricks workspace and leave this admin console for a bit. I'm gonna add that group to this workspace. You can see Transformer is here. And add that group. And now that group is available at both the uh, account level and at this particular workspaces level. You can see the user here. Next, I'm going to create a SQL warehouse. So instead of using all-purpose compute clusters, like what you can create in this data science and engineering space, if I switch over to SQL, and now it's showing me SQL warehouses. And these are optimized and more cost efficient for SQL workloads. And since that's the main driver of DBT, we wanna use that by default and use the all-purpose clusters only when we're using Python. So this is a look at all my SQL warehouses. I'm gonna create a new one by clicking on this Create SQL Warehouse button. And I'll name this DBT Training Demo. And I'm gonna start super small because while I'm setting this up, I might as well just be making it as cheap as possible. This is all something you can edit later. This is gonna have your scale out capability, this is scaling up. Click on create. And then you have the ability to manage permissions at the cluster or SQL warehouse level too. So I'm gonna add my transformer group that we just created. I could have it say, can use, can manage. I'll just keep that at use and hit add. And since I just made this warehouse, it's gonna automatically start it up. If I need to edit, I can go back here. It will have to restart if I do edit it. And if I wanna add new permissions, I can click on the permissions button here and add more users or groups. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the account admin console and we're going to create a service account. So we go to the user management, service principles, add service principle, we'll call this one DBT training SP. And this service principle is going to give us a user that no one can actually log into. So we can run our production jobs without worrying about someone logging into it and doing some ad hoc commands or getting access to data that they shouldn't have access to under their normal user credentials. We can confirm that this was created. And then we can hop over to our groups, go back to transformer and add that training service principle just like it's any other user. So now that that exists on the account level, we can come back to our workspace and go to the admin console. 
and go over to the service principles tab right over where you would normally add a user. Click add service principle. And we'll see that there and then we can add it. So the service principle has already been added to our transformers group, but there are a couple other entitlements that you probably want to give it. So you can click on that service principle. And for this particular workspace, we're giving it that additional access. And like I said, we can't actually log into this service principle. So in order for this to run our DBT transformations, we're going to need to get an access token, just like you would to get your normal user access token. You can do that through the UI. But with the service principle, you can't log into the UI. So we need to use a terminal. The instructions are over here on Databricks' website. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a couple of um, variables here, environment variables. And then we'll run a command that will help us get that ID, although you can actually skip that step just by going back to here. And this is the ID that you're pulling up with that first step. And then we need to create a JSON file, update a couple more things in that JSON file, and then run a post command in order to uh, create that token. Okay, so I just opened up my terminal. And if you're following along with the Databricks documentation, the first step is to do these two export commands. So these variables will be used later with the kind of copy paste commands for the following steps. This is your Databricks host name. So basically the URL you use to log in. And then this is your personal access token. So this should be blurred out in the video you're watching, but it would be the same kind of access token you use to uh, put into your credentials for DBT Cloud. In the Databricks instructions, there's a post command that you can run in order to get the application ID. But as I showed earlier, you can just get that from your Databricks UI. I think that's an easier way to get it. So I'm just going to copy and paste it from there. And then you need to edit a JSON file in your working directory. In this case, I'm just on my desktop, so I can clean this up really easily. So that's going to be named create service principal. You put in that ID, the application ID that we found from the UI, or you can get by running a, a command, a curl command. And then the comment can be whatever you want. And then the lifetime seconds is how long this token will be valid. So I just made this a really large number because I don't want my production ID breaking. Save that file. And then you run this curl command. It's gonna take those variables we set up with the export statements, and then it's gonna ingest that JSON file that we just edited. And it spits out the token value. So again, this is something that should be edited out on the screen that you're looking at because we don't want to share these. But this is what you'll want to copy and paste into the production environment credentials. We'll just save that value for a later step and don't share it. Okay, now we're going back to our Databricks workspace to look at Unity Catalog. We want to navigate back to the SQL space here, even though you could go to the data on any workspace. We go over to data. And these are all the catalogs that we have created in this workspace. So the catalog is the top level organizational tier in Databricks. And below that, you'll have your, your tables or your schemas and then your tables. We can go over to our SQL editor. We already have this SQL warehouse running, so I'm just going to use that. But we could find our training one here. Actually, that's running too, so let's switch over to that one. And it will take a few minutes to spin these up if they're not already running. I'm going to do a create catalog. Training test. I'm going to run create catalog. 
<clears throat> uh, we can hop over to my Unity catalog, see that this was created. And then I can add permissions here. And again, put that to my transformer group. So now anything created under this catalog will automatically be given create and usage to my transformer group. All these grant commands can also be run through SQL, but I just wanted to show how you could do that through the UI. And then when you get to your DBT project, you can manage your grants at the schema and table levels using grant configs rather than having to go through the Databricks UI.